What's up, y'all? It's me, Brianka J, and I'm your host. I want to thank you guys for coming back for another video for me. It's always a pleasure to have you. If you're new here, I want to welcome you to my little corner of the internet where we talk all things books. Today, we're going to talk about a very pivotal fixture in um, American literature, in African American literature, in my own life. And this is Mrs. Uh, Toni Morrison which much respect will always be given on this channel because I think she's just an amazing writer. So I wanted to go into her short story that I will read in another video. But before we do that, I want to actually give you guys just a brief history on who Toni Morrison is and why is she so celebrated. Um, so let's get into it. Make sure you comment, like, subscribe on this video and check out the description box for more videos. And if you like these biographical types of videos where I just give you history of the writer, let me know because I know a ton about a ton of writers. <laughs> So this is Toni Morrison, actually. So the 1993 Nobel Laureate in Literature, Toni Morrison is a novelist of great importance in her own right and is a central figure in putting fiction by and about African-American women at the forefront of the late 20th century literary canon. OK, she has made talking about African-American women and being an African-American woman a lit ass experience, even in literature. We respect her for it. Um, Morrison's fiction served as a model for reconstructing a culturally empowering past. She, she also goes into the American tradition of self invention, right? And she has even, she has, I want to say, I want to talk about people she's influenced, but like she's influenced every black woman who's come after her. How about that? And some black men and everybody else because she's amazing. Um, born in Lorain, Ohio, she earned a BA from Howard University and then she got her MA from Cornell University with a thesis on suicide in the novels of Virginia Woolf and William Faulkner. She began teaching a career in 1950, uh, began a teaching career in 1955, and she taught at my alma mater, which is Texas Southern University, TSU. I thought you knew. Okay, I'm sorry. Every time, though. I'm not sorry, because every time I'm going to do it. <laughs> anyway, she taught at TSU, and she also taught at Howard, her own alma mater. And she taught at, like, she, did, she was a visiting professor at Yale and Bard College as well, but um, she had two children, married this Jamaican man named Harold Morrison. They broke up in 1964. She was already writing by then, and she took a job at Random House. She went to New York City, and she worked up until 1983. No problem. Throughout her career, though, Morrison had been dedicated to constructing a practical cultural identity of a race and a gender whose self-images have been obscured or denied by dominating forces. So black women being lost into the wave of America and that double oppression and it hurts in a heavy way. As a black woman myself, I get it. So her first book, The Bluest Eyes, she already showed that narrative strategy is an important element in such construction. Then with Song of Solomon in 1997, she seeks a more positive rede redemption for her characters. She starts seeing love and a new light and has a positive view for them. So allegory, and then um, her next book, Allegory, becomes an important strategy. This is for Tar Baby. She draws on the strong folk culture of Haiti, where two contrasting persons from a troubled relationship um, based on their distinct searches and for and rejection of a heritage. Then 1987, she creates Beloved, the winner of her first major award, the Pulitzer Surprise, Set in the middle of the 1870s when race relations in America were at their most critical juncture. Um, the novel shows a mother being haunted and eventually destroyed by the ghost of a daughter whom she had killed 18 years earlier rather than allowed to be taken by a vicious slave master. Her next work comes in 92 uh, for jazz and she models her narrative voice in the progression of a jazz solo 
to demonstrate how improvisation with detail can change the nature of what is expressed. Then in 88, she writes Paradise, and it's a um, utopia that it reexamines its ideas in the face of 1970s realities, a rem reminder of how neither past nor present can be insulated from the other. In 2003, she writes Love. It had themes of murder, arson, pedophilia, and several rapes that punctuate a narrative in which arguments over a legacy dislodge awkward elements of the past. It's a reminder of how disturbing Morrison fiction can be. In 20, 2008, she gives us mercy, explores the contradictions between American pastoral ideas and the realities of Native American ex extermination and the African American slavery. So, together with her Nobel lecture, her essay is collected as playing in the dark, whiteness in her literary imagination. She challenges stereotypes in white critical thinking about black literature. And in her work, Morrison's voice sings proudly of a past with artistic nature of its reconstruction, puts all Americans in touch with a more positively usable heritage. So that's a little bit about Miss Toni Morrison, if you've ever been curious. And in my next video, I'm going to read her a short story. First, I got to figure out how to pronounce the title. I'll be back. <laughs> if you are new here, make sure you comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see y'all next time.